Welcome. This is the October 15th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Tara, Matias, Eva, DCH, U2C97, Jan B, Lenny, and myself, Michael. And if anything, Matias, it sounds like you've got some teasers about some work you're working on. What you got? So um, I've been, I've had some time to to work on the uh, OCI containers uh, model and I've gotten to a point where I'm moving my uh, current jail needs, all my current jail needs uh, on my machine, my work machine, my daily driver to uh, container-based uh, um, setup. It's working beautifully and it's basically solving most of my pain points around a, a rational, um, low overhead uh, maintenance of my uh, jail services. So uh, I will try to get a demo of, of that ready for uh, next Tuesday. Um, basically zero to, to hero uh, ah. from um, base installation to uh, fully functioning uh, daily driver with Beehive jails, uh, containerized jails, and uh, on PKG base uh, in, I hope, under 15 minutes, right? Something like, uh, something like that. That's the, I'm doing that for both my, my own work machine, but also with a view to, to uh, deploy this uh, on all our um, uh, profiles, for all our profiles at, uh, at uh, the company I work at. So it has to be something which is um, both uh, uh, robust and uh, does not require arcane knowledge of, uh, of uh, FreeBSD internals. Uh, so yeah. That's an interesting set of constraints. What were some of the, maybe the top three pain points? Because, you know, we've all done jails in various ways for a very long time, but you think the container model has solved A, B, and C. So, um, module, modularization, uh, so that you can, you can uh, um, reuse uh, the the parts that uh, that are common and uh, and, uh, and specify the custom parts and in a way that is maintainable, right? So that you can scale it up and don't start to get lost uh, in the in all the the spaghetti. It, it tends to quickly become spaghetti. Uh, um, so things like, uh, uh, I've tried, I think, uh, anything starting from, uh, from, uh, easy jails, uh, app jail, uh, Bastille, um, XC, um, uh, what's, what's its name? C, um, CBSD, um, pod? I haven't tried jailer yet, uh, pod. Uh, and uh, the whole uh, uh, container file uh, approach and uh, Tara's uh, and uh, Doug's uh, great uh, uh, work and base. I mean, it's it's become so simple. I can version control it. I can distribute it. I can update it. Uh, so updating was another big, uh, big headache. Um, at scale, right? All of this, we're talking about stuff where you want, you need to be doing things at scale and distribute, distributing um, your uh, your uh, a unified or a harmonized uh, set of uh, of um, of um, configurations, but being able to 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 customize, right? It. A lot of tension there. So if you if you manage to get three main <laughs> topics from what I said, um, 
but that's that's it basically okay so if i was to tease out ignoring entrenix you've got the modularization the reuse the ability to add custom parts and all of it's very scalable and uh maintainable something 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 yeah yeah exactly so it basically doesn't become a, a, a an exponentially difficult task are we collectively concluding that package base was a solid decade or two overdue and we've been missing it and oh my gosh life is better because it's here definitely yep, well, definitely, definitely. Well, yeah. okay uh, we're already uh, seeing by the way if you're running a uh, package base on current watch out for the libmd changes mm. just a public service announcement okay libmd.7 uh, because the package repository has not yet caught up with the latest uh, API change in current, um, you're left without a working executable for PKG to update. No picky, picky. Um, so yeah, uh, only on current. So where you have to uh, have uh, ABI breakage uh, because that's how you develop the ABI. And uh, the problem is that uh, Basically, the base packages and the port packages aren't released in lockstep. No. So I wanted to add that we're also seeing some package-based benefits in education. Uh, last year, I said Michael's OCAM BSD was useful in order to compile very fast and have like a small free BSD. Uh, but now what we're also seeing is we can use OCAM BSD with package base to be able to get uh, only the packages that we need in order to have a smaller systems that are properly packaged. Um, I should mention the exact feature why we like this is, uh, let's say there's a student who wants to modify the command. Um, in our case, it was the command. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember which command it was. Let's say cat, right? So they want to do, uh, they want to understand where cat comes from, right? Where, where's the source code for that, etc. So the students would do PKG which, and the file name, which is a feature of PKG. But pre-package base is like, oh, bin uh, bin cat is not registered in the database. But with uh, package base, now it's, you know, you can know where it where it's actually coming from. And also you can see what other files are in that package. So like when you're modifying an application, you can know, oh, okay, those are the other components in that. So that was kind of fun to, uh, fun to see in education as well. It, it, it made our lives much easier this way. I wouldn't say that it was overdue, Michael, because uh, our students have been using Dev1, Debian Dev1, Gen 2 and FreeBSD. And while the others have had package base, which is not technically package base, just packages, right, uh, in Linux for a long time. I've, since Red Hat uh, 5, would, whatever, I used it a thousand yeah, million right? years ago. Yeah. yeah. But it would break very often. In our it, case, yes. it's like, it's like it, it, it took it, yeah, it took us time here, but I think it's done the, in the <laughs> sanest way possible. So, but quick yeah, question education on is happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, about exactly that. Can one use Occam BSD to completely rip apart the user land, but then use package base to drop in, say, the tool chain? Go again. Can someone use Occam BSD to customize the hell out of the the base operating system, mm -hmm. but use package base with a few dependencies to get the tool chain in when they the moment they need a big fat compiler? Yes, that's yes. cool. That's useful. So let both yes. parts do what they do well. Love it. Yes. It. Yes. Well, I even had a student who was like installing package bases manually, which were made by OCAM BSD, but then he wanted to modify something, not modify, write code and compile code in there. So it's like, oh, now I can do PKG install dash R for BSD base uh, tool chain. Or okay, yeah, exactly. Chain. Yep. And now they have, you know, from FreeBSD, they have the massive thing but yep. they have their small thing under underneath and but that was not oh but yeah we we did we did meet some dependency issues i should say yeah sure because like you know ceiling relies on that so yeah but other than that it was fine yeah okay 
Well, now that's quite the ringing endorsement. Go ahead. What you got? Tara, why, why 120 megabytes? Is there something special about that size? What, TFT like payload? A, like a zip disk or something. Is it? Yes. I'm trying to squeeze uh, as much as I can, uh, but I couldn't go less than sure. 120. Yeah. There's um something I would really like to, to see. So a few years ago, you could... Um, put an entire distribution of FreeBSD inside, you appended it to the end of the EFI bootloader. And because you can load the bootloader directly over HTTP using something like IPixy, you could actually download an entire system with that. And this broke a while back, but I would love to see it working again. And it's just the sort of thing that lines up actually with package base. I believe no, there doesn't. was something like that for Linux, right? <laughs> like one one file, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have to disagree. It doesn't really. Uh, at that point, you don't want to use package base because just for package database to have an intact package base installation with the local registration is a few megabytes more than you need, and because this system is inherently feral and read only uh, on the server side. You don't need to track the version inside the system. So you would maybe bootstrap it with a package base, but you don't need it at runtime. Yeah, yeah sure. So you, you, it, it's more about the having the a, a standardized way to slim down what you actually need. And the yeah. fact, whether it's package based or Occam BSD is not really, BSD is not the point. It's about your uh, best. Isn't it great if you can just deploy just enough BSD to get up and running on onto the network. And then you can use download more files and do um, um, the reroute boot where you reroute back into the same kernel but on a larger file system. Yep. Yeah. Um, what you can do here is you can include an um, MFS uh, root uh, yeah. image, which is uh, compressed with basically so that your uh, MD image is also. Uh, um, is that STD compressed or something, uh, which should help a lot. And then you can use make FS to generate a tightly packed UFS one image for less overhead. Or so you can try just tar FS, which if you don't want, the problem with using MFS root or the bootloader approach is that you can't regain the memory. If, so if you're getting it down to 100 max, maybe that's okay on physical systems, but especially on virtual systems, you probably don't want to waste 100 max of wired down kernel memory for an at runtime unused image. Okay, so a quick point there. I recall Rod saying that Something in FreeBSD 12 broke where like one Pixie file was just broken, missing, or whatever, whatever. And it sounds like you too has something to share. And I really want to get you encouraged to just jump right in, say, raise your hand, say, yo, Anthony, shut up. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> no. Or Michael, hey, I got something. Welcome. Just one thing. Well, yes. you're sincere. Uh, I think that the. Mm, FreeBSD minimal, I think it's that's the way he called it. Uh, image uh, uh, kernel from oh. Doug from the Doug Raps. So no, it's a oh. uh, OCI container, so it's a, oh, it's okay. the base image. Uh, yeah. PKD works, and it's thirty eight megabytes. Okay, that's so it's too small to be a full user land of AMD sixty four. It, it doesn't have a kernel, it's, so that's why it's much smaller. Okay, um, but yeah. At that point, you're ripping out basically everything you don't need to chain into your uh, rerouted next file system, and it's no longer a fully functional user land. No, I won't discuss that. You have to rip it out just if you add up the numbers. OK, so uh, let's see. Oh, it is um, a very old system. Uh, you too, do you have something? You've got the floor. Is that the virus that Apple spread? 
No, wait, this was a band, band name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. <laughs> okay, you two, is your audio working? You wanted to jump in. Let's see, you're muted. I'm going to ask you to unmute. But I'm pump. You've got the floor. It's all yours. Regarding the question in the document, are there yes. any jail management systems which are clustered? Well, if you use the Nomad jail drivers, there are different ones, a generic one and a pod specific one. And I think a third one, which is uh, no longer maintained. Um, so um, those are inherently clustered. But uh, I don't know uh, of any sufficiently advanced networking and uh, storage drivers, or I haven't seen it integrated uh, to play nice on FreeBSD so that you get your VFS storage. Um, the container network uh, stuff is pretty simple because it's JSON RPC, you can probably quickly hack something together. Sadly, the storage one shows gRPC as a mechanism, so it's a bit harder to write your own provider. OK. So we've got pod, but not itself, with Nomad. With, mm. did we technically There's also a generic can... one, which just uh, takes normal jails. What do you mean? It basically just uses the jail command to run the con and expects uh, jail to stay in foreground. It, then in that case, who is managing the cluster? Nomad. Oh, so it's Nomad, but OK, got it. Well, what else do we have that's clustered? Like you can manage okay. multiple hosts. So I've got. I, th I think three. it's. Sorry, go ahead. Someone else? Yeah, Kubernetes. I think Doug Rapson was was running all his uh, a lot of stuff on Kubernetes, and it seemed to be working. I haven't tested it. But... Uh, I, Sorry, I have. I have. I I did. I did after our last call, uh, and uh, it's working fine as you would expect. Our Kubernetes is apparently managed by the same person who is building Kubernetes also for uh, SmartOS and Illumos and ov overall all of the Illumos thingies. So you know, it's it's there. That's kind of nice to see. Um, and apparently it's just a Go binary. Uh, the, you know, the control plane of Kubernetes is just working all fine. Uh, do we have anything else, like anything for BSD specific? I'm wondering if CBSD can do it, because I've heard that they've been working on clustering for a while, but I haven't seen anything other than Nomad, Kubernetes, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Nomad, Kubernetes, and maybe CBSD. So I have, I have uh, yeah, the best for, um, for, for FreeBSD. So um, the first bit I needed was, um, it's written in Elixir and it's just a cluster, um, a, nice. a cluster that keeps track of state of things. It doesn't care what it is. And the second bit I need now is this is why I need the tagged jails so that the jails can be tagged so that the cluster can query how many whoa, whoa, whoa jails have we got active? Do I need to do anything about it? Um, and that's kind of my next project um, underway. Um, but first, it needs the the tag jail. Oh, so so you wanted like a key value database in the operating system with the jail structure. Yes, I have to. You have to have that. Otherwise, you have no way of knowing. You, you've got to have some standard way to get metadata about the jail back to the central system uh, so that it can say, "I've got enough of these things running." So that's the tag jails that I've been chasing about for a couple of years. And and um, and and Dave. Um, uh, I was wondering, um, do you have any idea what part of the system needs to be modified for that? Um, yes. Yeah, so we, we talked about this last week, and you're 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 away, um, which is totally fine. I forgive you. <coughs> um, um, I've got Igor um, um, Ostapenko to look at this, and we've just been working on um, I don't know what you call them requirements. Dot recently ah, and yeah so I jointly but I read the documentation yes 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 yes, yes. okay we're, we're we're away with that um, we've got some or well, he's got some ideas on how how to go about doing this yeah okay that's 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 great that's great okay 
That's very interesting, indeed. So, uh, Dave, what you can do without uh, modifying the kernel in any way to use something like OSD to associate metadata with the prison struct or something uh, is what you can do instead is to uh, pick jail IDs above 1 million, which are never auto allocated by the kernel so that you're not running into normal uh, conflict yeah. with normal yeah. jail usage. And then you can just uh, maintain a mapping from jail ID to, uh, to your metadata in a file somewhere in var run. Basically var run uh, my jail manager jail ID slash and then state or something. So what I, I know it's a bit hacky, mm -hmm. but it will work perfectly mm -hmm. uh, if you use persistent jails and don't just run roughshod over your system. Um, so what I did currently is I used the Linux. Um, uh, I think I can't remember what it is now. There's a Linux OS name or OS release, and I stuck. Oh. <laughs> And, and, and is it legit? No, but I wanted something where I could spit like 30 odd characters and that's enough. You can fit um, like some sort of UUID or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. You have to host UUID. Um, yeah, it's another one of those things that you, 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 you've got to stick something in there and, and Linux the OS name or OS release, I forget which one it was, gave mm -hmm. me 30 bytes, which was enough to sort of go, yes, this idea isn't crazy. Um, oh. The uh, host UGID is 128 bits. Um, you can, I don't know if it's really encoded as a UGID and decoded or if it's just a fixed length string long enough to hold a UGID. Yeah. Uh, but that's definitely enough to uniquely identify a jail on the host. But the the uh, problem is use, you've got to do it across multiple nodes. And uh, that's not a problem. Yeah, because we have the UUID gen a system call, mm -hmm. which uh, derives uh, the old-fashioned OSF1 uh, UUID, which embeds the host's uh, primary MAC address, so that you will never have collisions between hosts, because unless you also have MAC address collisions between hosts. That's a type one UUID. Eva, have you used Little Jet, the general load balanced uh, distributed jail manager? I have been using that a bit, not extensively, mm -hmm. but it's pretty interesting. Little Jet. Do, 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 do. It hooks into app jail, <clears throat> but then its director Ooh. function has support for, it basically attempts to be uh, jail manager agnostic, so you can use the director to control other jail systems as well. Yeah, DT, DT, that one. Yeah, DT, 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 DTXDF has been creating a nice ecosystem. The problem with his tools, uh -huh. uh, AppJail and Director and, and LittleJet, I totally forgot about LittleJet, by the way. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, great find. It, yeah, is that they're so easy to use, but so hard to set up. <laughs> oh. uh, it, it took me a while to figure out, or, or rather not, not to set up, but like just to figure out what it's doing internally. Although I guess most people don't care how many people who actually run Docker even know how Docker works. You know, they just use it, not learn the internals, I guess. But yeah, it's, 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 it's very nice. And the director specifically is very good, you know. Uh, it's, 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 it's done in a very nice way. Yeah, I mean, in a nice way for, you know, like the majority of the market. I actually think that YAML is a mistake. I still think that. Yeah, everyone but, who uses YAML seriously gets to that point. Which version? Version 0, 1.1, 1, 1, 1, <laughs> How would you know? Wait until you find um, someone with a fetish for anchors. Yeah. yeah anchors are great. Um, but yeah, anyway, don't get me started. I'm Zen. The UCL might be the best configuration that the planet has in, in a long time. Like the whole Nginx format thing is, is, is very interesting. I, I would like, although I would like to see some kind of 
uh, not declarative, but also imperative actions in UCL that would have been nice, like having four each loops, for example. Um, uh, register your own macro. Do it. Or, or just create your own macro. Yeah, Jan, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. That's how I implemented my fancy directory include. Uh, yeah. Which it's up to you if it uh, makes sure to be item potent and feel uh, declarative or if it. You can easily do, but the imperative is the default. You have to be careful not to become imperative with macros. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave, do you know if there are any Elixir libraries with UCL? Yes, I wrote one because I you wrote it. one. Okay, great. Thank you. Is it on hex? I'll see. It's if you go to hex.pm and go for UCL. Somehow um, I missed it. It's just bindings. It's it's cleverly named UC, UCL. I went all out on yep. the naming. Um, it it doesn't have access. To, um, it only does what I need, but you know it's enough. So adding more stuff is easy, and all it needs is. Uh, UCL functions two JSON. That's all I need. Two JSON. Literally, that's link? all I need. Link. Yes. The link is coming. There you go. Thank you. Uh, where did the document go? I lost Hex. your document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is also the documentation. Yeah. Oh, so it is NIF based. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, there was another guy who was working on a native Pure one. Pure Elixir. Yeah. I said, I bet you I can figure out how, how to write NIFs faster than you can figure out how to write your package. And I won. Um, <laughs> um, um, of course, needs, native needs, functions are faster um, to implement. Um, the, the one thing I'm missing from it is um, I would like it to do the JSON schema validation stuff. Um, so I've done yeah. a version of C, and I just have to figure out how to wire it up to Elixir, which is much harder because you need to keep the validator around because you don't yeah. want to free up each time. Mm. So that's just one function, and you give it an already passed... Uh, root object to your schema and that, so there's a the schema validator inside libucl only understands a json schema up to draft version 4 with yeah, a few extensions yeah yeah but that's enough to be almost universally useful the afterward there came mostly little things the one thing which i find annoying that json schema doesn't include as default values But I think they still don't do that. And other things like uh, using uh, basically dedicated enums and, uh, or as a single value so that you don't have to use uh, arrays. And so this is really just a bit of quality of life improvements, which aren't that important. But I, at some point, they're reinventing um, ASN1. Yeah. <laughs> so you two C ninety seven is writing a question. Does someone want the honors? It sounds like one of those sort of tar versus package questions. So yes, it would be a great idea. Um, I did some experimentation about a year ago, roughly, on doing this within the ports tree, and it's relatively easy to do, except that. Um, compressing and uncompressing the data actually makes it quite slow. Um, the way I would probably do this these days is I would make the jail and use tarfs to to mount it. Um, or the other thing you can do for it is um, you can use ZFS data sets if you want. Um, um, yeah. The, 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 the catch with any of these things is um, as soon as you do that, you then have to figure out the hard problem of, but how do I get the variations on it? Um, someone wrote a really neat library in base, uh, not in base, in um, in the, I think in the ports, no, it wasn't base, in base for EPSD to allow jailing any application that's in- SVC? Um, yeah, it's by a service, by, by yeah, by, by a yeah. service. And Unique, but it's not quite the same thing. I don't know about the sale program. Is it one you're suggesting to in, invent? 
Can you provide a link to the tool? So the, the problem with uh, ZSDD or other XZ compression is that deploying their fig jails is now basically CPU bound by just decompressing uh, your uh, tarboards, um, which becomes annoying because it's not that slow if you keep your systems uh, reasonably sized, but you still use enough time that you lose attention when deploying and so on. Um, so what you could do is you could um, basically just install via a package or whatever the file somewhere. And if you do it via a package, you can have triggers, uh, which is basically a way so that any piece of software can register a Lua script to be executed when the package manager modifies paths during a certain step, which match a certain pattern so that uh, then your basically your um, callback is invoked whenever a package under that uh, directory where all the jail packages are installed would go. Uh, all the jail managers would get invoked and then can taste that similar to geom and take the jail in uh, and prepare it for quick uh, deployment. So that basically only installing the package takes the hit, and then you have your tarball converted to a, a ZFS snapshot, which you can yeah. quickly uh, provision. Yeah, Jan, you're pretty, well, Dave, too, pretty pr proficient in, in, in ports. I'm wondering if the ports framework can be used as basis for distributing jails, right? So, you know, Docker has Docker file, Many things have many things. I'm wondering if because like the community already knows ports. What if the uh, the, the 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 mechanism of ports, which is basically make files with predefined things, can be used to define a a jail, if that makes sense? Yeah, yes, I, I did don't exactly. think so that it makes sense because the ports tree uh, is normally uh, centralized, as in where are uh, the Ports committers and all modifications go through them. And for no, the jail manager, no, 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 you, you want that. I, I, I love it when you go so technical. Don't go technical. It's like someone comes to you and says, I want to go to Mars. Let's say Elon Musk comes and says that. And your answer is, I don't know what your answer would be, but like, you know, there are a lot of things to learn when you think it that way. My point is the idea of having to make files similar to what we have in ports as a system to define what a jail should be, like what services it should enable, what files it should modify, what packages it should install. Uh, you, you see what I mean? Is, is it even doable uh, to have a, something similar, a make file style system for managing, um, for creating rather, jails or I'm defining I'm not familiar with the implementation of a pods infrastructure, sorry to burst your bubble, but um, <laughs> um, so you better ask a uh, ports committer who has touched it, but sure you could probably do it through make files. Um, I don't think that make has any special uh, advantages here and you probably have to pull in quite a bit of make support uh, scripts from uh, base as well. Obviously, yeah. Um, yeah, jump in. No, go ahead. This is your call, not is, mine. Jump you in when you feel it. Treat the, the uh, jail as a an entity to be managed from the outside, or as a FreeBSD user land managing itself. That's, in my opinion, the biggest uh, decision hmm. you have to make. Is it the container workflow, or is it a lightweight uh, virtualization technology? Hmm. So can I yeah. can I um, um so that that's part of what I wanted to discuss uh, in my demo, but uh, the the container file uh, that's one of the things I found really liberating and helpful. It really works, I think, for exactly what you're saying, uh, Anthony. It lets you define if you can if you let me share my screen just a minute. 
Hmm. Maybe I can show you. This is definitely not the the um, the final. Uh, I mean, it's not polished or anything. So yeah. don't. Worry. Yeah. So uh, th that that's my. I have created here um, containers um, directory where I have. Uh, definition for uh, in this case only have four uh, and so a base system a base headless and uh, mm -hmm, I'm working mm -hmm. on an nginx and, uh, okay so the 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 base system uh, you look at the before file. before we go i want to ask what editor is this can you increase your uh, font sublime. size a bit sublime oh it's sublime so cute i miss this is it better yes yep. okay uh, you can see here, uh, mm -hmm. Vera, that's your image. Um, so basically, and here what it does is uh, goes from that base image, uh, runs this network host, very nice. It goes directly to the to the host, so you can you don't need to to you can do that with the jail that is not connected to uh, to the so all the PF etc problems that you might have go out of the window. Um, and basically, what I do here is I, I uh, install, I bootstrap PKG, install some base stuff that I I want to have, uh, add users. I have the files. I can copy anything, and then I can reuse this. For instance, I reuse this in my uh, that's a dev environment for Pulumi, and I'm just going from there. I add a few more uh, dependencies. Super nice. Uh, I have this. Uh, where is it? Script uh, where I, I I build my all my images in a Go, and the the part which is great is that I can here link uh, the I mean mount the PKG cache. System, cache. Yes. So it's blazing fast because. Everything I'm doing, it's just it doesn't need to 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 fetch. It's just uh, it's just uh, and it builds your images, and then you can you can run them. You can uh, you can um, uh, uh, transiently run them, and you have <clears throat> all this. Uh, you can compose all this stuff uh, together, and then linking to the with the the previous uh, the previous topic. Give me one sec. Maybe let me share something else. And anyway, uh, any questions on that? And maybe Andrea, yes. does that? Um, how you, the, in the end you had not in the end in the last file in the beginning you had yeah. localhost slash base system. Uh, how did it know to use that instead of Tatora's thing? Did you tag it? Was that it? Yeah, that's uh, so. Let me share share my you, screen again. From a remote registry, it stops being upstream whatever and starts becoming a uh, local host. Okay. So oh, that's okay. where the it comes exactly. from. And when you okay. push it yeah. up again, you want to tag it yeah. the upstream one. So, and if I do uh, podman images list, oops, sorry, podman image list, there I have everything I have on my, uh, on my, um, and I can just run it. Uh, so that that's what I was doing here to see if PKG was uh, was working. Uh, I don't know. So I'm in my in my jail. I can launch one, and then I'm. Uh, see, it's super powerful because you can build everything that you plus that you want plus reuse the the. Um, Plus, we use the, mm -hmm. all the Docker files that exist in the wild. Uh, the container file is format is compatible with the so, and you can actually use the Docker file. And then, also big spoiler, I've been working on, I mean, making a, 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 a making a program out of something that I've been using for a year now and that I briefly discussed with you, uh, Jan, mm -hmm. which is um, which is Git-based um, config control. So basically, 
let's say that I want to see, uh, so I call this CFG. Uh, and the reason what I'm, what I'm putting that is that you can use the, the Git concept of branches and distributed version control to distribute your configurations. So it tracks uh, user configuration, machine configuration, and you can branch out of any of these to have a, a different version of your, uh, of your uh, com uh, configuration. You can diff between the branches. You can diff between the commits. You can see the, the history. So if I do, uh, let me stop talking and show. Uh, if I do, I want to see uh, GUI. So that's my uh, config history for the last. Uh, so I installed this one a month ago. And I can go to each of me, my, my, uh, and I can create branches. So this one doesn't have, so FM01 is one of my uh, machines, but if I go to, uh, I want to see host, uh, so I have another host called Carbon02. And uh, this one I used, it branched out from Carbon01. Anyway, you can, and you can do everything you can do with Git, right? Uh, uh, which means you can diff, you can check out, oh, I have this version of that file here that I'm interested in. I can just check it out, test it, uh, and it's all extremely uh, quick and, uh, and it works. And you can, it works with ZFS. So you can actually ZFS send uh, your configurations anywhere. You can use Git and it's just, uh, I have all this on GitHub. So you can basically, and you can use it for jails too, right? So you can you can just uh, um, that's what I want. Configuration. Yeah, and so if I say, for instance, uh, CFG, uh, I want to see the difference uh, between my uh, this machine and uh, this other host, so Carbon O2. I'm just telling it to 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 compare to Carbon O2. So now I have everything that. Uh, uh, that's different between me and this version. And I can point to any, any branch, any commit. Uh, and if I want to see, for instance, now at the moment, what is, uh, what is, uh, so that's uh, is your, status. Is your, is your right. root file system in Git? Yeah. Okay, so like you would Git in it in a slash. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, I have a bit, uh, a few more um, protections, right? Because I don't want to, to, so basically what Include I do. Include the binaries, yeah. So you can, you can, uh, exactly. So you can um, define, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Jan. Are you using just a lot of git ignores? Uh... Uh, not a lot. One for each. Uh, so if I if I look at my uh, my git git ignore here, it's uh, oops uh, slash git ignore. Why am I not? Okay, I don't know what I've done. Oh yeah, well it's not auto completing. So I don't have a lot of stuff, but that's what I'm ignoring basically, uh, and it. Uh, and if you look, everything is in, uh, is in, um, I don't know where to start. There's <laughs> quite a few things. Um, it's all on ZFS. So if I do uh, list dash R C root uh, config. So those are different uh, things. Those are it comes from other computers. So basically, I can ZFS send or ZFS receive from these computers, and I have all this uh, available. Right, and it's uh, um, you can you can and you can do everything that you can do with Git. Uh, I am I am wondering if if we can inverse it. You know what I mean? Like instead of saying. Git ignore, more like Git ignore everything, but include these files. Does that make sense, or does that yeah, yeah, not? Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You can just it's, uh... Git ignore uh, wildcard and then still add individual parts. parts. Exactly. 
You're taking a mm -hmm. wild card and then add the rest with a bang. I see what you mean. Okay. Just add it. Uh, Git add will override it if you manually yeah. add. But you yeah. can that way easily miss things. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, Matthias, can you can you go to the slash git slash dot I mean, git directory? I'm just interested in the size of this thing. I mean, you've yeah. been using it for a month. It just would be very nice to see what it looks like. So, 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 so the, the, you will see that recently it's much smaller because I've become uh, I've understood where the pain points were. Uh, so that's uh, CFG. Uh, So I have, and I have uh, also a read-write version and a read-only so that you can uh, work with that. Uh -huh. So basically, read-write repos. Uh, so you see Carbon02 was, uh, was the, when I was really reckless and uh, FM01 is my, uh, so 200 megabytes and I have a lot of stuff in there. You can be much more parsimonious uh, uh, depending on what you what you want. And if you go, to the um oh yeah sorry uh, if i go to the because that's not only uh it's the host but also the users okay so uh the host is uh here is 170 megabytes and each user has its own uh git repo so it all depends on what you put in there uh it can be as small as you as you as you want or as uh, it, it doesn't really there isn't really a set size it depends on what you need to 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 version control. I see. And if I use dash m, then it tells me my uh, so that's my user. But you could also say uh, dash u uh, root, right? And that's for user root. And you can say I want to compare root and uh, uh, me, for instance. And then it it uses and you you could say I want to compare me on host Carbon02. So you can combine all these things, right? You can say, I want to use, uh, uh, I want to compare this with that and, and it just lets you do all of that. Uh, and it's pretty easy to actually also do that, combine that with uh, some SSH so that you can actually deploy and fetch as long as you have an SSH connection, you can do that uh, uh, directly, transparently also. This is actually so, very, very nice. Uh, uh, where's the source code of this? Uh, let me point you to that. And it's there's, I made a port also. So I, I haven't pushed the port to, uh, to I haven't asked for a, a commit of the, of the port yet, uh, but uh, so it's on GitHub. Um, so um, if I do get uh, remote, okay, uh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry, because it's not git. Of course, it's CFG, and then it's it was V all right. So there you go. Git at GitHub.com. Matthias Pisarra. FreeBSD BCFG. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. That's for my. Uh, that's that's, that's the, for your um, instance. Yeah. Yeah. Copy and yeah, paste yeah, whatever instance. you come up so with, let, please. Uh, yeah, so let me. I let normally me, just yeah. throw slash etc but, and user local etc into separate Git repositories on uh, fast moving lab systems. There mm -hmm. we go. CFG. Nice. Uh, I'll paste the link, Michael. Thank you. Where the hell is our docs? Eek. There we go. You would think I know about, I know my own. Um... It publishes, publishes. <laughs> and it's in pure shell, which I love. That's great. I guess it only has one dependency, which is Git in this case, right? Exactly. exactly. It has an optional dependency on Git K so that you can do the nice uh, GUI Graphical, thing. Yeah. But, uh, but that's it. Nice. But that's it. Okay, let's get to you two's question. That's great, Matthias. Fantastic, fantastic. Love it. And it sounds like you've got some very positive uh, feedback here. Uh, you two, you had another question. Uh, would Sail be usable for the average desktop user? How does it compare to EasyJail? Has anyone used Sail? 
I have the not way, used, sale, I have never way, heard of sale, sale actually. Way. Do you have a link for sale? Please drop it in the chat. Dave? Uh, regarding yeah. your work to add uh, a pods category and user support for uh, gens, um does that already work for compiling basically jails into packages or does it just uh, yeah, in air yeah. quotes work for uh, a local pod tree? Um, so the specific thing I wanted to explore was um, what, what, what are the problems we want to solve? So one, we have jails already work for running jails. We don't need a new thing for that. And what um, sort of the Docker worlds provide is it provides this really easy way to fetch containers. So my thought was, what would happen if we use the ports tree to provide the built containers, which technically is just a tarball, right? Just a tarball in the staging directory. And then you would have package container fetch or pull or whatever people want to do that. Um, so you can put anything you like in it because it's just a tarball. And the um, little bit of wrapping stuff I put around it was experimenting with getting ZFS to create the data set before you unpack the container um, and then snapshot it afterwards. Um, and in the end, it becomes um, what was it, like an exercise in performative dance. Like it sounds initially interesting. And then as you get down to the details, you're really just trying to get things to fit together that don't work very well together. So my big takeaway was um, Docker works well and Podman works well because you have one tool that allows you to build your container inside the single repo that the code lives in. And then you spit out this thing which your configuration management system then picks up and deploys. And that's the really nice thing about it. And so doing all of this inside package just starts to get very clumsy. Um, now that said, so do, doing this inside the ports tree gets very clumsy. Now that said, package itself is extensible. Um, um, I'll try and find a link of, a, of an example for this, but there's no reason why you couldn't write a simple plugin for package that does the, um, the, the that does all the stuff for you, and then it would go. You could go like package container fetch, package container push, but then you're inventing, reinventing what Podman and so forth already has. So after doing that exercise is when I said it makes more sense for me to put my effort into helping Doug's work rather than um, something else. Yeah. So you do not want to uh, maintain that uh, experiment? No, that's why it's hitting a commit. It's not even on a branch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering, which branch to find that in and okay, it's just a dangling commit. Okay. It's not really dangling. It sits in my whip branch, which is where I put things that haven't graduated out to being useful yet. Uh, I can send you a link to it, yeah, that's no trouble. You did drop a link, but um, just to the commit and yeah. Well, anything else, gang? We've covered a lot of good ground. That's all very enticing. I, I, two, two short things. Please. Yeah, so um, one of them is, is tangentially related. It was what, um, um, I can't remember now who said they had the power power nine sisters or this was Eva. That would be Eva. Tara. Eva. Tara. Tara Eva. Yeah. Anyway, the, 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 uh, I've been working on getting Bill Kite CI set up for the ports and source tree. And um, the goal with that is to be able to run uh, basically anything. Um, but I'm personally specifically interested in making it really easy to run um, uh, on hardware that is provided by people within the project um, for doing things like source builds, package builds, that sort of thing. So PR, review, before commit type stuff. Um, and that's being worked on in the Discord channel um, set up by um, by Warner. What's it called now? Discord, Discord, GitHub hacking. Um, but yeah, the goal for that is you do a PR and just like any sort of GitHub PR thing, um, it's got a dash in it, Michael, GitHub dash hacking. You, you, you do a PR and then a, someone would go, yep, that looks good. Let's 
let's try and do that. Um, you know, do, run the tests, and if the tests pass, then you pass it over to a human to review. And if the human is happy with it, then um, it could be easily merged. So that's using Bill Kite. I'm not particularly wedded to Bill Kite. My obviously my long-term personal goal is to replace Jenkins and Bill Kite um, with my own stuff, but Bill Kite works today and mine doesn't. So I'm going with that. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it for me. U2C97 sounds like you're having trouble with large tarballs in GitLab. Is that is just not handling it? Anyone else seen that? I'm just going with so what's the there. issue? Or how does it manifest? Boom. Ah, oh, there's your work in progress tree. Can I post that? That's boom. <clears throat> it's just my it's just my pile of shame. So <laughs> it's not particularly useful. It's when I do stuff in ports and I need to stick it somewhere because I've got something um, actually. Tara? Justin. Um, yeah. Send me. So um you asked uh, two weeks ago about um I think uh, about how I bootstrap package base. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, I'm today I hacked around on my script, so uh, I kind of broke it in a, so it's mid refactoring, but I, it's now at a point where I can at least show what are the steps it's supposed to do, if, even if it doesn't run. So if you have a minute, I can just quickly put it on screen. Um, so here, uh, that looks right. Oh, do you so, think I can see that? Because I'm. It's pretty tiny. Okay. Yeah. Let me, can you uh, embiggen that? Better. Yeah, better. Thanks. So uh, here's a bit of uh, parsing help, basically, to extract that, and that's what I wanted to clean up. But the important part is. Um, uh, at that point, I already have uh, the jail file systems mounted. Uh, but so now I create the missing directories because you need uh, directories to put two files in for a packet to install a package based jail from the official repositories. And the two files you need are uh, once uh, the reasonable one, a package based configuration file, so that you know the repository. Uh, which in my case is called FreeBSD dash, dash base, um, just following the uh, example from the uh, wiki. And um, I write that to uh, slash etc pkg here inside the uh, J. The less obvious one is you need the uh, fingerprint file with the uh, code signing certificate for the uh, packages. And that has to be inside, so you have to pre-populate uh, your these two files for the package manager to be able to use it with the dash dash root deer flag. And then I have this little helper. I have to make it a little bit wider so that it fits on one line. Um, this uh, insane incantation is uh, the prefix I put to my package invocations so that uh, it sets the right ABI. Um, it ignores the OS version inside the package and including the OS major version so that I can, for example, install a 14 jail on a 15 current system without getting uh, loud warnings because you just have to make sure not to install a newer uh, base system than your host. Uh, but yeah, yeah because the safety mechanism works. I don't want mean to be rude, but I'm, yeah. I'm a bit blasted. Can you okay. can you upload it somewhere so I can have a look and try? Yeah, no, no uh, problem. I will uh, try to make it available. Well, uh, either either on the doc week. or do do you have my email address? Uh, I don't. Just send me a DM if you want. All right, fantastic. Um, but, uh, Sorry about that. I'm, I'm giving up. And the result is uh, of. 
is I think 104 megabytes uh, after LZ4 compression in, uh, with one megabyte uh, block size in ZFS. Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing this. I'm, I'm gonna go, sorry about that. Yep, no problem. Take care. Bye, bye, bye. So, um, yeah, that's just really fetch the packages. Uh, first of all, update the repository, then um, run a query against the fetched index um, so that I can use uh, something like this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So this query then defines what I want to keep. Nice. So I throw out everything and basically I have other presets like this is just a symbling to so the full one is the multi-gigabyte one, then uh, small is the same as tiny, just that I do keep the uh, documentation. So. Definitely need to publish that. Is your, uh, is your uh, blog back in, back to life uh, or not yet? I have to get in touch with stupid Oracle and get to talk to a human because for some reason uh, either one password uh, broke or whatever, but uh, they claim that my um, that my um, stupid pass key does not match the one they have on record. Uh, I did rotate my keys and then uh, something broke. Uh, either my password manager didn't store the right key or whatever. And uh, right now, I can't get in touch with a human to uh, re-authenticate. Okay. Wow. It's annoying. But uh, all the articles are still, uh, I made sure to upload all ar uh, articles to the uh, Internet Archive. Uh, so if they are back online, now if you can at least still, yeah, they were uh, hacked and then DDoSed. Correct. Anything uh, else? Results. Shall I make someone else a host or we're we gonna call it good for the official call? Um just stop the recording. Really? Okay, well then uh who wants the honors? I do, I do, I do, I do, you I do, do. You okay, go, 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 go. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye, Aww. everyone. Bye.